Hello again, and welcome back to the Day of Daily Bible Study. We're continuing on with the book of Revelation. Uh, we are in chapter 19. We're going to start in verse 11 and go till the end of the chapter. Uh, before we do that, let's pray. Uh, loving God, we read today about the coming of Christ, uh, the return of Christ. Lord, one of the most evocative um, images in this whole book. Lord, help us to see what we need to see. Help us be encouraged how we need to be encouraged. And Lord, help us to stay focused on where you would have us keep our focus. Lord, in all things, today, tomorrow, and every day, Lord, let us live our lives remembering that you are the one who holds history in your hands. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Continuing on here, starting with verse 11, we read, And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he who sat on it is called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he judges and wages war. His eyes are a flame of fire, and on his head are many diadems, and he has a name written on him which no one knows except himself. He is clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies which are in heaven clothed in fine linen, white and clean, were following him on white horses. From his mouth comes a sharp sword, so that with it he may strike down the nations. And he will rule with them with a rod of iron, and he treads the winepress of the fierce wrath of the God Almighty, God the Almighty. And on his robe and on his thigh he has a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried out with a loud voice, saying to all the birds which fly in mid-heaven, Come, assemble for the great supper of God. So you may eat the flesh of the kings and flesh of commanders and the flesh of the mighty men, the flesh of the horses and all who sit on them and the flesh of all men, both free men and slaves and small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies assembled to make war against him who sat on the horse and against his army. And the beast was seized and with him the false prophet who performed the signs in his presence by which he deceived those who had received the mark of the beast and those who worshipped in his image, worshipped his image. These two were thrown alive into the lake of fire, which burned with brimstone. And the rest were killed with the sword, which came from the mouth of him who sat on the horse, and all the birds who were filled with their flesh. So once again, we're reminded that um, people whom the world has liked, people whom the world has considered to be worthy, who have they have followed him, they've been popular, all the rest, they're the ones who are going to be destroyed. And so we should always keep that in the back of our heads whenever we court popularity, whenever we court power, whenever we court um, economic prosperity, because um, we don't hear about God coming in and treading down, um, you know, the poor, the downtrodden, the destitute, all the rest, the oppressed. No, those are the ones that he's coming to liberate. And it's a reminder that if there needs to be liberation, it is good news for those who are being liberated. It is bad news for the oppressors. Um, and so we ought to be doubly on our guard to make sure we are not joining with the oppressors. Um, and I don't know that we can look throughout history and say that Christians have not, have always not been oppressors. I think, unfortunately, we have too much oppression in our own history of, of doing the oppression. So we need to be extra careful that we don't, that whenever we reach into our past and reclaim something for the future, that we don't reclaim that oppression that we have done in the past as well. But here, here we have this idea. So we've had in the past, we've had these horsemen before. We had hor the four horsemen of the apocalypse of war and famine and pestilence and all the rest. And now we have a, we have a coming of a new horseman, a new horseman with a new name and a new power and a new army. And this is the one that it's many ways, it seems as though like before we had these four different phases and there's this long drawn out experience and these difficulties here and there. And now we have, um, you know, we have this coming of this, the, the man on the white horse. So was it the, the, the ride on the right horse, the king of kings, the Lord of lords, the sword from his mouth going in and basically in short manner, wiping everybody out who stands against him. Uh, it's a sign that really makes it seem as though we are dealing, we're not dealing with a conflict. We're dealing with an absolute routing. Um, I think it's fascinating that twice in this passage we read about a sword that is coming out of the mouth of this person, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Um, this seems to go hand in hand with this other New Testament theme of this idea of Jesus is not just the Son of God, um, but especially in you know the Gospel of John, and I believe we also get it in the in the letters of John. We have uh, Jesus referred to as the Word of God made flesh. The Word became flesh and dwelt among us. This idea of the voice, the speaking, the the very the the language. Um, the logic, the, the the rationality of God, you know this this intel this intelligibility of God, you know this idea of we speak a word, you know the the word the word for word is not the same thing as like spoken word. Greek has a distinction between the spoken word, which is rhema, and we have um and we have the the um you know that the idea of the ideas contained within the word, which is logos, and it's logos, and so we have this idea of the word of God coming forth that is as Hebrew says sharper than any double-edged sword and can really pierce to it. And it's a reminder here that, that so yes, we're, we're reading this description of an absolute destruction of armies and all those who stand against God. And yet we also have the sense in which the nature of this sword is also coming from the mouth of Jesus. That we have the words of Jesus. The word of God is what is doing the battle. 
And it's really significant that we see that because we are not being called. I don't think we can look at this passage and say that Christians are called, certainly not in a general rule, to form an army and, and you know, flood the, the world with the blood of our enemies. We definitely have the sense that the, the warfare we are called to is of a spiritual kind that we wage and we win by using the voice and the word of God. Now, sometimes that is a challenge for us, and, and sometimes we want to have more overt military, physical, obvious victory. Um, but I don't know that that's what this passage is saying. I think this passage is really saying the very power that transforms the world is the word that comes out, the, is the sword that comes out of the mouth of Jesus, um, who is faithful and true, and the King of kings and Lord of lords. Um, we could probably pick this apart in a bunch of different ways, but we definitely do see a different kind of horseman, a different kind of scenario, and a different kind of battle being waged here than we've seen earlier in this book. Well, that's all for today. Come back tomorrow. We'll have one more day of daily Bible study. Have a good day.